In this video, I'd like to just take a moment to uh, show how we would do uh, some data imports into Octave or Octave Online. And um, so the first thing I'm making sure of here is that everything is cleared. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload a data file. Now, my data file is called uh, people. And it's a .csv file, so in this case, this is just a made-up file that contains people's names, which are just represented here as A through S, uh, ages, and then heights, okay? And so what I want to do is import this data, and the way I can do that is I can uh, run a function called xlsread, and uh, just like an Excel file. And we want to read in this uh, Excel file, except again it's a .csv. And we'll put single quotes around the file name, making sure to use proper case. And we'll put that in single quotes, and uh, we'll click XLS read. Now, before I do that, that's just going to read in the data, but it's not going to assign it to anything. So I'm going to create a matrix. Let's suppose I want to call it A, um, and I'm going to let uh, that data read store the results in the matrix A. So I press Enter. And uh, over here I see the, the data, but over here what I see is just the values. And um, what, what got uh, kind of dragged in here is uh, zeros for the column headers and uh, the zeros for the, for, the, for the column one. Now the reason that happened is because uh, tables or matrices need to be of a common data type, and some of these are characters and some of these are values. Okay, well, we really only care about the values anyway. So I really, what I want is the omission of the first column and the first, or the, excuse me, the first row and the first column. So what I can do here is I can either create a new matrix or overwrite the old matrix. So I'm going to overwrite the old matrix. I'm going to say I want A, but I don't want all of A. I just want certain pieces of A. So I want uh, of the A matrix, I'm going to use parentheses here, open and closed. And inside of here, what I'm going to put is I want to retain, um, I need to tell it which rows I want to keep first. So uh, let's just say I want it to uh, keep all of the rows. And the way I'll do uh, all of the rows is with a colon, and then I'll put a comma, and now I'll specify what columns I want to keep. So I only want to keep columns 2 through 3, so I'll do 2 colon 3. And now when I press enter, you can see what that's done is it's retained all of the rows. I haven't deleted any rows yet, and I've just kept columns 2 through 3. Now I could have done the, the same operation for the rows as well, but I'm going to do that in a separate operation, just one by one. And one of the safe things to do is, is if you make a mistake, of course, you can reread in the, the original CSV. But uh, a, a wise choice, which I didn't make here, is to perhaps uh, take any manipulations of the matrix you've read in and store it somewhere else. So call it B instead of overwriting it. But I'm pretty confident that I could do this. So in the next step, I want to just keep um, all but the first row. So the thing I can do here is I can say keep row 2 all the way up to, and then I'll type in end. So what that'll do is it'll keep the row 2 all the way to the very last one. And I just don't want to have to count all of them. And I can see how many rows there are here. But I'm just going to say 2 through end. And then I want to keep all the columns. So I'll just do a colon with no values there. And when I press enter, now it's just kept, uh, we can see here, rows 2 all the way down to the very last one. And now I have numerical values on which to work. So things, of course, that I can do here are uh, my typical operations. So, oh, by the way, let's say I wanted to sum up, uh, I don't know, maybe I wanted to sum each person's age and their height together. So I can create a, a matrix of ones, for example. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make a two by one vector of ones. So if you wanted to make a matrix that just contained a bunch of ones, you could say, uh, you know, two by two, for example. And now if I press enter, uh, that function just creates a vector that has two ones in it. Now if I take um, a times ones two by one, notice what that does. That actually sums up the ages. 56 plus 70 is 126. Um, I can also do things like uh, create the identity matrix. So I, if I do I, E, Y, E, like an eyeball, parentheses two, um, that'll create the two by two uh, the 2 by 2 identity matrix, or I3, that'll create 3 by 3 identity matrix. And so if I want to create an assignment, like let's say I don't want to change the A matrix, but I want to take A, I just want the sum of a person's age and their height. So I'm going to take A times 
uh, not i's, a times the ones matrix that's two by one. And I want to store it into a new, new matrix called B. You can see that B is now 19 by one instead of 19 by two, because I've effectively kind of smushed together the two columns into a row. I think what I want to do next is I want to add up all of these values. So I'm going to create a ones vector that is, let's see, uh, I'm going to do one by 19. And so that's a row vector containing 19 ones. And now if I create a new matrix called C, and I take the ones one by 19 and multiply that by the B matrix, I get a single scalar, a one by one, which is 2011, which is the sum of all of the people's age added to their height, and I get 2011. So all kinds of cool things you can uh, do here. You can get pretty creative. You can also create, uh, you, know, you can take the ones vector, for example. Let's say I make, make a, a two by one vector of ones. But what I really wanted is a two by one vector of fives. Well, then I can just scale the ones vector by five, and I get a effectively a, a vector containing fives. Um, I can do scalar multiplication just as usual. I can take five times A, and that just takes uh, five times all the elements in the A matrix. I can basically do all of my operations, provided that my dimensions match up. So if you try to take a two by one vector, so I'll just call this vector O for ones, and then I create a new vector, which we'll call F for fives, and I take five times the ones two by one vector. Okay, so I've got a vector of ones and a vector of fives. And if I try to multiply O times F, I'm gonna get an error. Um, Non-conformant arguments, Operation one is two by one. Operation two is, or operator two is two by one. So I can do things like uh, I can do O raised to the power of. I think you can do O to the power of T. Let me make sure. Let's open my mouth here. Nope. Um, but what I can do is I can do. Let me see if this works. Nope, that didn't work either. So one of the things I can do is I can transpose O and multiply it by F. If I can spell it correctly, and so that takes the transpose of the ones vector, which makes it a one by two um, vector and then multiplies it by the f vector. So you can actually try it. If I transpose the f vector, for example, it creates a row of fives. So I can use that functionality as well. So pretty cool things you can do in here. And um, you can pretty much summarize as well. I think you can also do XLS right and um, XLS right. So let's see here. A to the file, new file dot CSV. Let's see if this works. This may not work. Okay. Well, you can also uh, write the data to a file. I don't uh, have that l language right off uh, available, uh, but you can also look it up. So XLS read tells you what you can do with that function. Um, I can also do XLS write. Let's see if that provides me with information. So I can actually write. CSVs or Excel files. Um, so, okay, there we go. So this tells me how to do it. I'm going to give it a file name. I'm going to call it A, or I can save it to a CSV. So I'm going to say, uh, let's see, XLS write, and then I'm, I want to call this file new test file dot CSV, and I'm going to uh, I want to store the matrix. Uh, we'll say the matrix B inside of that file. And I write it. Um, let's see what happened here. New test file. So maybe what I have to do is call this an Excel file. Did that work? It didn't seem to work either. So it appears uh, XLS write is not supported, but I could do uh, CSV write stands for comma separated. It's a comma separated file. And what I can do is give it a name now. So maybe I want to call this uh, new test file dot CSV. Uh, I'm just putting it all caps so I can easily recognize it from my files tab. And I'm going to what I'm going to what do I want to store in there? Maybe I want to store the matrix B in there. And uh, so you notice nothing pops up. That's good. Uh, now it's not showing up here. Let me see if, uh, if I refresh this. Of course, it's going to mess up any unchanged uh, uh, or unsaved changes, and I should see in here, there it is, new test file.csv. So I wrote that new data, which is the sum of the person's age and their height, to a new file. So that's one thing you can do with it. If you don't need to write the file, you don't have to, but that's uh, certainly an option. So uh, hopefully this gives you kind of a good sense of some of the basics of reading in data, and uh, I'll go ahead and stop there.